Welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. When I bought this movie, I'm talking about The Immortal Wars, as we're going to talk about today. Um, when I bought this movie, I did not think that I'd be using, uh, I'd be invoking Food Fight, um, Troll 2, um, what else is there? Oh, the Room, obviously, um, Birdemic, um, all of these just so, so bad they're good movies. Never thought that would be where, where, where this one would end up. Um, here is the thing. This movie is god awful, but you have to see it to believe it. That's, that's what I'm gonna say about it. So let's, let's start out with the really bad that make the movie kind of hard to watch. And it's not in a cringy way, it's just poor technical, uh, technical ability. Number one, the lighting is atrocious, and I get why. The movie's set in the future, in a futuristic environment, and much like Captain Marvel, where there's a lot of CG all the time, so in an effort to mask the CG, they shroud the movie in darkness. Um, if you look at the first Guardians movie, that's, that movie's a lot darker than the second one, uh, which had a bigger budget. Um, it's a trick, where what you would do is you would, uh, you would hide the movie in darkness, that way, if the effects don't look great, you, you don't really tell. It's why Doomsday fights at night. It's why a lot of superhero movies have fights at night. Because it's easier to hide bad effects in the dark. This movie might as well have been shot using entirely natural lighting, though. Um, in a dark room. Um, because it's just god-awful. Um, that's problem number one. Uh, problem number two, the sound mixing is also atrocious. I watched it without subtitles, and I think you need subtitles to have even a, the slightest passing understanding of what is going on in this movie. Um, because it's not like the effects are loud or anything like that. It's just so poorly mixed altogether that it, you can't really tell what's going on, period, at, at any point in the movie. Um, that said, I did kind of figure out what was going on. What the movie is, it's, what if we took The Hunger Games and put X-Men in it and called it a day? Um, now, here's the issue with this, though. This movie is so dependent on the two movies it's very blatantly ripping off that if you haven't seen those movies, you are not going to understand what happens. Um, and, and, and I think the biggest example of this is there's a ranking system that happens I think a little bit before midway through the movie there's a ranking system that comes up and they, they rank all of the um, all the characters uh, all the characters by power level I guess um, but there's no real context and the reason why it's there is because it's meant to be a quote unquote homage quote unquote blatant rip off of the scene where um, I'm, I'm forgetting the name the, Stanley Tucci's character mm -hmm. in the Hunger Games um Stanley Tucci's character on The Hunger Games. He, he, he has that thing where it's like they, they pan around, uh, and it's like they're showing people's reaction as, as it's just like him cut as he re reveals all the character, all the important characters, uh, power levels, um, or rankings, or, I forgot what the exact thing on The Hunger Games is called, but whatever. Um, that scene is done basically the exact same. The difference is, this is a 90 minute movie, and we don't know why they're doing this, what the, like, all we know is that they've rounded up mutants, I'm sorry, deviants, um, and put them into this TV show where they fight to the death, um, in a tournament style, where it's like, you know, two fight, winner goes on, the other one's dead, um, so, we, we find out that the main character, who, I think this is the point we figure out that she's the main character, Tricolypse, tri Tripocalypse, Tri, I don't remember her name. It was something stupid. Everyone has these re weird mutant names. Like, I think one of the characters' name was Toxin. Or something like that. Um, but... It, no, it, was, it, it wasn't. Because she had a, a random Y in her name. Um, either way, it's like... There, there's all, these, all this weird crap going on. And, and really, none of it provides any contact. We don't know what's going on with it. And, and it doesn't really help you understand the movie in any way. Um, the movie appears to be building to, there's kind of like this fight that happens. Now, because of the fact that the movie doesn't explain it to you, 
the person they're fighting at the end of the tournament. I don't know if she's the previous uh, victor. I don't know if she's the queen of something, like king of the world. Head of the, no, it's it's a company. Head of the company. But at the end of the fight, whoever the deviant is who wins has to fight this person. So the movie's building to that point. And that's the thing. And what happens is uh, she... Um, the main character wins. I'm not going to have to pronounce her name again because I'm going to fuck it up. But she wins the tournament, gets to fight this person, and then as the person shows up to fight her, she it cuts to the credits. That's, that's the end of the movie. And it's like, it, it, it's it's like, what the fuck? Like, it's bold of you to assume you're going to get a sequel to it. Like, imagine writing this movie and going like, yeah, we're going to get another one. And the thing is, like, there was a there was a time where if you released this as a, as a novel, it may have gotten traction because there was that dystopian kick that we had for a while. Um, well, you had the Hunger Games, you had Divergent, and it's very obvious this movie existed, uh, came out to kind of try and exist in that space. Um, but it just, on no front does this movie work properly. There's nothing in this movie that works the way it's intended to, and it doesn't, um, and it's not, you know, great. And it, but there, there, there's nothing, oh my god, the special effects are awful. And this is a special effects heavy movie. And they even filmed the movie in darkness to hide how bad the effects are. But, like, there are times where it's like, you've ever, you've probably seen the picture of, uh, what's it called, um, from Attack of the Clones, which was 2002, where, like, they, they put the, uh, they CG, and, then like, most of the Jedi Temple CG, but there's, like, these three Jedi Knights who are, like, extras, and, like, they're, like, in the forefront of the scene on a different plane of existence, like, what the hell, like, it's kind of the same thing here, where it's, like, there are effects that are on an entire different plane of existence, like a frame, like a picture frame, to the scene, and it just looks really weird. Um, and, and quite honestly, like, I'm watching the movie, and I, I have no attachment to any of the characters. I don't care who any of the characters are. Um, so, like, I, it's not, like, in The Hunger Games, it, when you start out with The Hunger Games... You become attached to Katniss. Um, because you see her, you see her home life, you see what she was pulled away from, you see why she does what she does. But for the main character in this, it takes until about halfway through the movie to figure out who the main character is. Because there's so much going on, and it's just nonsense. And it's like, I you, you just don't know what to where to go with it. Um, but yeah... It sounds like I'm, I'm I'm shitting on the movie, but, like, it's one of those things where it's it's so bad that you have to watch it to just to kind of wrap your head around how bad it is. And I think that one of my favorite things about this new age of streaming and distribution of movies, uh, independent of the, the current coronavirus issue, where it's going to expand streaming movies, I think, to an extent that we've never seen before, where independent movies are going to start propping up on Amazon using Amazon Studio... Um, I think it's, this is a distinct, this is a very interesting way to go about, um, what's it called to go about, uh, oh my god, I forgot what I was just said, I went completely off on a tangent, where it's like, oh, these movies are going to, movies like this are going to show up more and more often, and I think that what we should be doing, I don't know if ridicule is the right word, because that's what it sounds like I'm doing in this movie, because I'm not really ridiculing the movie, because it's like, 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 you can tell that some of the people are trying, and you can also tell that some of the people are just friends and family who needed to fill seats for extras, um, but, like, not, like, in a, uh, in, in a clerk's kind of way, kind of in a you-owe-me-a-favor kind of way, um, I picked this movie up for $10 at Walmart on DVD, you can probably get it on Amazon or something like that, um, through digital, um, but even though the movie's bad... And, and, and this is something that I want to, as we're into this age where everyone's staying home and everyone's watching movies, um, please don't pirate movies. Especially if, even if the movie's bad, even if the movie is not good. Because here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm talking crap about the movie, but I want everyone to watch this movie. Because it's, it's one of those things you have to see to believe. And I think everyone should see this movie. Because I, I, I don't, like, like, it's, it's so good you have to see this movie. Um... I'm going to watch it again, I feel like, because it's just, there's just so much to dissect with it, um, that it's worth watching over and over again, it's, it's so, it, 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 
if the right audience is found, I can see this movie getting a cult-like following like The Room has. Um, or like, uh, what's the other one? Or like, uh, not Birdemic, but like the other, like, like Troll 2, which is known for being such a bad movie. Um, but yeah, definitely check this out. Don't pirate it. Find it legally. Pay for it. Because look, it's bad independent film. It's not a good movie. It's a bad independent movie. But it's an independent movie nonetheless. And on this podcast, we support independent movies. Well, on, on all of the podcasts that I do, we support independent movies. And I think it's wrong, especially in a case like this, um, the pirate. Because at least he, the, the person who made this and, you know, the team that went into making this, like, yeah, it's bad. But it looks like it was shot for, uh, they bought a pizza for the, for the cast was the budget. So that's why I think that, you know, we should, if it, definitely, if you need something to watch, you need something to laugh at, definitely see this movie. Um, you can get it at, um, probably find it on Amazon. Okay, I just looked it up. It is available on Amazon Prime to watch for free, so you have no reason to pirate this movie on Amazon Prime. Uh, the sequel, which I will talk about at some point when I do watch the sequel, um, is, uh, is also available. And the sequel, according to IMDb, is by all accounts miles worse than the original. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Um, because I want to see how that fight turns out. Um, but that is available, the sequel is available to rent. Man, he crapped out two of these movies in two years. What the hell? Um, but yeah, they are on Amazon Prime. Definitely check it out. Um, and please do not pirate, even if, you know, even if the movie's not good. Um, I can't see a price. I'm a Prime member. You can buy the sequel for ten bucks. I'm not anticipating this being any more than ten bucks, but definitely check it out. Um, so until next week, we will be doing uh, Guardians. I think is what we're going to do next week. Um, Guardians being the movie, uh, not Guardians of the Galaxy or um, Wrath of the Guardians or anything like that. Uh, it is Guardians, the Russian Avengers knockoff. Um, again, got it at Walmart for ten bucks. So until next week, have a great rest of your.